Because Deadpool and Wolverine just got released, I figured now would be the perfect time to review the classic sci-fi film, Forbidden Planet. Forbidden Planet is the 1956 science fiction film made by MGM and directed by Fred Wilcox, starring Leslie Nielsen, Anne Francis and Walter Pigeon, and introducing Robbie the Robot. You will meet a charming character in The Robot, able to produce on order 10 tons of lead or a slinky evening gown, always at your service. So even if you haven't seen Forbidden Planet, uh, Robbie the Robot is probably one of the most iconic sort of robot designs. So I'm pretty sure like if you're into science fiction, you've probably seen Robbie the Robot as a design or an image like somewhere. All right, so getting to the plot. The story takes place about two or 300 years into the future. And this is the first film to mention faster than light travel. Okay, so uh, humanity has discovered faster than light travel and we have now sort of spread across the galaxy. And we have this uh, military vessel that is heading off towards a planet called Altair 4, uh, which is like pretty far away. And they've been traveling for almost like a year. And their mission is to uh, go and check up on like a group of 20, 30 scientists that were sent to Altair 4 like 20 years ago and to figure out if everything is fine or if, if not, then sort of rescue them and bring them back. So when they reach Altair 4, uh, they get in touch and the only person who answers back is someone called Dr. Morbius, played by Walter Pigeon. And Dr. Morbius is sort of very cagey and he's like, look, I don't need any help, just go back. And they're like, we've traveled for a year, we're not going back. Yeah, here it is. Morbius E, PhD, Lit D, Expedition Philologist. Philologist? What do you wish here, Cruiser? Well, you, you don't understand, sir. We're your relief. We're very glad to find you alive. I, of course, appreciate your concern, but absolutely no assistance of any sort is required. Oh, the red carpet treatment, huh? So the land of the planet... And then Robbie the robot comes to sort of take them to Dr. Morbius. transport you to the residence and dr morbis is still being sort of very cagey and you know doesn't want them there and so the rest of the movie is them trying to figure out like what exactly is dr morbis hiding and how to fight off this monster that you know is probably going to attack them all right so before getting into the positives of the film which is like a lot of them uh, i just have like one negative which is uh, the romance subplot Right, like Anne Francis doesn't have anything to do except being like the damsel in distress. And uh, the big problem is that she has zero chemistry with Leslie Nielsen. So even when like the romance happens, which sort of happens like that, uh, it's just like there's nothing between them. So you kind of like might as well not have the romance plot. But beyond that, like the f everything else in the film works. Like this is one of those films that if you remake it today, with the exact same plot, it will work. So the, the core concept revolves around uh, the fact that you have this alien planet, which uh, you find out has like this uh, very ancient alien race that used to live there, but they've all died away. In times long past, this planet was the home of a mighty and noble race of beings, which called themselves the Krell. And then, uh, They've left behind all of this technology which, which Dr. Morbius has sort of discovered and is trying to use. And then you find out like, oh, the technology might not be as safe as you thought it was and it's going to cause a lot of problems for everyone. And like that plot is, is something that has been used in like a lot of science fiction novels and movies. Like even uh, the previous Alien movie had the, had the same idea. Like Alien Prometheus has like a similar concept. So the idea of the, the, the core story idea is extremely reusable, which is why like remaking this like won't be a problem at all. The acting across the board is pretty good. Like Walter Pigeon as Dr. Morbius is great as the ego driven mad scientist who sort of, you know, like everyone else is beneath him. He does like a great job with that. I am Morbius. I'm Commander Adams. This is Lieutenant Farmer, my executive. 
and uh, Lieutenant Ostro, our ship's doctor. How ironic that a simple scholar with no ambition beyond a modest measure of seclusion should out of a clear sky find himself besieged by an army of fellow preachers, all grimly determined to be of service to him. And everyone else is like adequate. Like Leslie Nielsen is fine. It's kind of, I'll be honest, like it's kind of odd to see Leslie Nielsen in like a serious role. Because like I grew up in the 80s and Leslie Nielsen only did comedies. Like he's, he's like Naked Gun and uh, Air, Airplane and you know like Mr. Magoo and Spy Hard and like all of that stuff. So watching him do like this absolutely serious role, and he, he, like there are no jokes in this movie. So it just, it is very strange to see him do that. Anne Francis is fine, like her job is like, you know, wear short skirts and look pretty. Like the, the funny thing about that is that the film actually got banned in Spain because like her skirts were too short. So the movie was released in 56 and it didn't release in Spain till like the mid 60s. So for 10 years, the film was just banned, you know, because Anne Francis's skirts were too short. <laughs> so from an acting standpoint, like, you know, no complaints. But what makes the film impressive are the set designs and the VFX and of course like Robbie the robot. So the set designs were done by uh, Cedric Gibbons and Arthur Lonergan. Now Arthur Lonergan has like a few films to his credit but Cedric Gibbons is like just like his filmography is insane. Right so uh, something he worked on something like 1100 films. He was uh, one of the 29 founding members of the Academy of Motion Arts and Science, which is the, the academy that runs the Oscar Awards. Uh, not only that, he designed the Academy Award trophy. So the Oscar trophy that you see now was designed by Cedric Gibbons. And he was nominated for 39 uh, Oscar Awards and he won 11 of them. Uh, so Cedric Gibbons and Arthur Blagerman did the entire set design and they are huge. So the entirety of the film is shot on sets. Like there is like zero exterior stuff done in the movie. So uh, you have like the interior or like the main living room of Dr. Morbius's house. You have the garden. You have all the, uh, the, the Krell uh, lab and you know all the Krell structures that you know Dr. Morbius shows to them. And then you have the interior of the military spaceship uh, that Leslie Nielsen is, is like uh, the captain of. So that's a big, huge set. But the largest one is the exterior uh, sort of desert, rocky landscape where the, where the spaceship lands. And that is massive. Like it's, it was so huge that it took up like the entire studio space uh, that MGM had at that point in time. And uh, it's sort of like the spaceship was like 170 feet wide. And then beyond that, you have the entire landscape. And then you have like this massive background painting, like a cyclorama that they painted. But yeah, like, so you have like this massive detailed landscape that they make for like, with, and they're sort of like the majority of the story takes place. So this, that one is really detailed. Uh, beyond that, there are like these two fantastic shots with these matte paintings, like when Dr. Morbius is sort of taking them on a tour through like the Krell facilities and the Krell sort of lab and everything. Like one of them is nice, the other one is absolutely fantastic. I think the other one, even if you put it in a film today, it would work really well. And then you have all the animated VFX stuff that was done by uh, Joshua Meador, who was uh, who was an animator at Disney and sort of MGM sort of borrowed him from Disney for like the period of the film. So he sort of hand animated like you know the main effects that they needed, which was primarily for like the the Reagan blasts and the disintegration effects. <laughs> and like the core. A VFX shot from the movie where uh, the beast attacks the spaceship. So the beast is invisible, you never really see it. So the only time you see it is, is in this one sequence because what they've done is the like Leslie Nielsen gets everyone to sort of put up like a force field around the ship 
because the uh, the beast has attacked them once before and they sort of realize like we don't see this thing so they put up like this force field and the way you end up seeing the beast sort of when it walks through the force field it so sort of like the energy or the electricity sort of like gives it like this outline and it's done really well like it's actually really nice to see like a, a hand animated creature uh, in like a proper science fiction movie and like done really well and and of course in the end you have like robbie the robot and uh, robbie the robot uh, cost about like a hundred and twenty five thousand dollars which was about seven or eight percent of the total budget of the movie which is huge and uh, i really like the design of it because this was i think the reason why robbie the robot is also sort of really influential is because this was the first robot design that is uh, you know f especially in hollywood that wasn't like a tiny little robot or whatever this was like a big huge robot with like arms and legs and everything and uh, i like the head because like inside the head you have like these sort of uh, switches that sort of flip on and off whenever robbie is thinking now this is a uh, no offense but you are a robot, aren't you? That is correct, sir. For your convenience, I am monitored to respond to the name Robbie. Nice climate you have here. High oxygen content. I rarely use it myself, sir. It promotes rust. So when the movie says uh, introducing Robbie the robot, and I was thinking like introducing like was Robbie in other movies? Apparently he did he did like one more movie and a couple of TV shows and everything. So Robbie did end up having a bit of a career in Hollywood. So in the end, I'll say this: uh, as a movie, Forbidden Planet still holds up. You know, like the plot isn't silly or anything. Like it's a pretty serious plot, and it's uh, you know it's treated well. Like except for the romance stuff, which is bullshit. But uh, yeah, the plot is good, the ideas are good, uh, and the execution overall is done really well. Like all the VFX stuff, all the set design work, really worth looking at. So if you've already watched Deadpool and Wolverine, you should watch Forbidden Planet.